now we're here, we're in the day of Iron Man. I'm looking around and I see it's over 2,400 of the fittest athletes in the world. Yeah. And here I am lined up with them. Yeah. You're talking about a, a, a moment that humbled you, but it, it was still surreal. And it wasn't until the cannon went off and now the swim, the 2.4 mile swim is underway. And I tell you, there are some female triathletes that they were punching me in my head. I mean, it was competitive. And I realized... Full of piranhas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I realized, you know, I didn't talk to Jude about this part of it. <laughs> but what Jude always said is train smart. And so what I did immediately is I swam away from the washing machine, as they say. And then I kind of angled in. So I let all of the fast people go ahead and... The next thing I know, Jude, again, when I talk about feeling like the program that you designed for me turned me into a machine, it was, I mean, it literally was that. Focus, my stroke, breathe, reach, grab, you know, rotate, you know, all these little things that this is what I heard you say over and over again. All of a sudden, I'm not hearing you say it anymore because I'm doing it. Yeah and it just starts to come. But you know, when I got through the 2.4 mile swim, people thought that I won something because I was so excited. It's not that I was, um, I, I was happy because it, it was an accomplishment. Absolutely. I knew, I said, if I do not get through this 2.4 miles swim, I will not be an Ironman. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden I'm coming out of the water, I'm pumping my fist, and now I'm ready to take on the 112 mile bike. Right. And you know, I'll never forget, as I got on the bike, left the Monona Terrace, and now I'm off. And there was a lady that had, had a sign held up. It said, free head examine, <laughs> you know? And, and it was fitting because here it is, I'm going out on this 112 mile bike ride, just finished the 2.4 mile swim, and the science that free head exam. Right. And you know, I just, I just, I laughed, I took it in because Absolutely. that's the other thing that you share with me. Aaron, along this journey, make sure you're taking it in. You know, don't, don't let it just become about the race, but have some fun. Yeah. And that was part of the fun on yeah. my way out. Um, but I just remember, you know, getting into um, the, the bike. Um, I started, you know, hydrating. Exactly what you told me. Um, the nutrition part, exactly what you told me. Everything was great. Jude, I look up, I'm at mile 90. And I remember getting to mile 90 and I started cramping right in my chest. And I remember thinking, God, really? You're gonna get me this far, <laughs> you know? And take me out of the race? And I started praying and I started praying and the cramping went away. And the next thing I know, I'm coming to the Monona Terrace. I'm getting off the bike, you know, 2.4 miles swim down, 112 12 mile bike down. Blood sugars are perfect. They were perfect, you know, with 80 to 110, I think, the two times that I tested. The one time, I believe it was like maybe 107, another time it was 90. But you're talking about hitting every aspect yeah. of oh, your yeah. training. And so now I got the 26.2 mile run to go. Just a marathon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so now I'm feeling it and I'm thinking, you know, could it be? You know, and so I get out and I'm into the run and now I'm paying attention to the clock because I believe it's now about uh, 8 p.m. I've been at it since 7 a.m. That's a long day. Yeah, and uh, you know, I just again, I kept focusing on the training, but I remember getting through the first half marathon and I look at my watch. It was two hours, 32 minutes, you know, second fastest <laughs> half marathon I've ever run. Yeah. And I just remember thinking, Aaron, you have 13.1 miles left and you will be an Ironman. Do not mess it up. Mm -hmm. And really from there, Jude, I started taking it in. I started paying attention to the surrounding. I'm having fun. I'm watching the other athletes. Um, I'm just feeling like I belong. And that's the part 
that I can't explain because just 300 and something days earlier, I didn't think it was possible. And now here it is, I'm finishing my last 13.1 miles en route to not just becoming an Ironman, but potentially making a little history. Yep. And so I just remember coming around the turn, I hear the crowd, you know, downtown Madison, you can hit a finish line. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, you know, getting a little teared up yeah. because I'm thinking about when I started, I was not confident. I was 242 pounds. Uh, I believe I was 30%, 36% body fat. Mm -hmm. uh, on race day, I was 182. Um, I think the last time we had checked my body fat, I think it was like four or five percent body fat. I mean, I really kicked it in. Yeah. So I'm reflecting on all of this as I'm coming down that final um, 100 yards. Yeah. And all of a sudden you hear um, Mike Kelly, the Ironman announcer said, Aaron Perry from Madison, you are an Ironman. And yeah. that, you know, I can't tell you how, how good that felt. Yeah. I mean, it was just an incredible feeling. You were not at the finish line, but you were with me. Yeah. And because I said I could not have achieved this without your guidance, without your patience, because I knew I was probably one of your most challenging clients, <laughs> you know. Hardly, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but Jude, I, I, I stayed with it. Everything you laid out for me, I succeeded at. And again, the best way to explain it is that you had confidence that I did not have in myself. And along this way, that I magically found confident confidence. And the, the neat thing about getting done with the Iron Man and starting to see all of the magazines that you find yourself in. I don't know half the magazines. I was getting calls from people that I hadn't talked to in 20 years. Mm -hmm. They're like, Aaron, is this you? You know, and you know, man, congratulations. Mm -hmm. You know, then the phone starts ringing and now people want you to come and speak for them. Yeah. And you know, that's really kind of the neat part is that you start to realize this is, this is bigger than, than yourself. Yeah. Particularly when you are put in this spotlight to do something good. And then I started to realize I felt so good. I kept thinking, even in that last 13 miles, I'm not supposed to feel this good. I was worried that something was gonna happen. <laughs> And you know what? I just stayed with the training, yeah. and, and I finished. But more than anything, um, the, the, the best compliment that, that I could ever give you, I don't know who taught you this stuff, but what you laid out for me was, uh, I, I just can't explain it. I mean, you, you, you heard me. You heard my fears. You heard my concerns. You saw when I wasn't confident. I think there was times you backed off on certain areas because you thought, well, maybe he's not too confident. Now he came far, I don't want to lose him. <laughs> but you just had this knack for just being able to critique things in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. And all I can say is, you know, yes, I am an Iron Man today. Right on. Um, world's first African-American diabetic to ever do the race. And, and you're my coach. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, that's great. Yeah. Well, I wasn't at, your, at the finish line because that's your moment. You know? <laughs> at least that's the way I perceive yeah. it. You know? And uh, I'm glad, you know, I've seen the pictures of you crossing them. Yeah. And I, I hear that all the time, mm -hmm. um, you know, when they call the name. And it's just, it's such a magical time. Yeah. So, yeah, that, it's just fantastic. And um, you, by far, were not my worst client. <laughs> um, you're one of the fun ones. Okay. You know, because uh, I like, I what I'm hearing you say is, I feel like we had that dynamic where you know we were um, able to communicate and we we listened to each other, as you said, and we were able to kind of work through things uh, together. Right. And, yes. and I, I really believe, you know, like you had mentioned, you know, you're the one who has to do it. You know, I'll be there and you know do what I can on my end, but I can't do the race for mm -hmm. you. You've right. got to kind of figure some things out for yourself and mm -hmm. know that there's going to be adversity, right? no yes. matter what, and yes. you know, mm -hmm. how are you going to respond to adversity? Right. You yeah. know? Well, so we just try to train uh -huh. for those things yeah. and you know, hopefully we'll get through them and right. you'll have the confidence you know, once the race is here to, right. 
yeah. to not work. Well, you know, then, um, so that was 2005. Then in, in 2008, I wanted to do this again. Yep. And I hired you again, or I, I brought you on. I don't sure. think you charged me because I think, you know, we just had it going. Right, exactly. And it was just, it was really cool. The problem is, I didn't succeed that year. I didn't, I finished, I think I got to about maybe mile 60 in the bike and I just couldn't go on. Mm -hmm. The biggest difference, I didn't listen to my trainer. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest difference. I own that, I did not listen to you. I thought I did this before, I got it again. And literally I think when I got through that first 40 miles of the, the bike, I knew I was in trouble. Mm -hmm. Um, my nutrition was off. Uh, I was cramping like crazy. And the one thing that I will always remember um, you saying is that you got to listen to your body. Yeah. You know, if, if, if it ain't right, you know, Aaron, it's not right. Uh -huh. You know, um, I think the, the term you use, if I'm not mistaken, I used to have it down. But training under unpleasant circumstances only yield negative results, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And you know, that's what was happening with me in the second Ironman. Um, I wasn't prepared. Um, I knew that if I would try to push through it, I was just going to injure myself. Mm -hmm. And so in 2008, I ended up getting. A, I did not finish or DNF. Yeah. But I vowed that that would never happen again. I tell people today, if you. Um, bring on a trainer, listen to them, you know, I mean, they, they have the expertise, they, right. you know, they just listen to them. And that was the mistake, that's, that's I regret that, you know. Um, so now, I want to do it again. Uh, I want to do it next year. Uh, I can tell you, Jude, that just in December, my doctor, because of the knee pain that I've been having, my doctor talked about doing a joint replacement mm -hmm. in, in my knee. And you go to show you that God is good. Um, so the day that I was supposed to meet with my doctor to come up with the date for the surgery, the when I got to the appointment, they said, you know, Aaron, the doctor's not in. He had to go out on a, a family emergency. I said, okay, well, well, I'll just wait to hear back from him when he gets back. Mm -hmm. No biggie. I talked with you and you know we talked about this the cushioning of the knee you know start start you got to strengthen your knee mm -hmm. and you know I think you may have made some reference to strengthening the quad mm -hmm. around that knee so that when you're running that well, you, you absorb that impact mm -hmm. and Jude I got to tell you Saturday I ran 3.5 miles I felt so good on Sunday, I turned around and ran another eight. Really? Yes. And I don't think I did eight miles the entire year last year because of injury. Wow. Once again, something simple that you shared with me that I hadn't heard. I didn't hear it from my doctors. That what I heard is we're gonna we're gonna cut your knee open and right. do some stuff. But you share it with me, you know, Aaron, just, you know, try to strengthen that knee, build up those quads.